Today I want to talk about mana problems on Sorcerer and how just to never have the issue of running out of mana. I made a few guides recently and the comments I'm seeing a lot are that you're struggling with mana and people just saying they can't make the build work because they have no mana. They, they, they're always running out and that shouldn't be a problem. Once you get your Sorcerer uh, well equipped, you should never have the problem of running out of mana. Like I'll, I'll show you if you just cast a bunch of blizzards, it's full. It, you should never run out of mana once once you know how to solve the mana issue. So I, I just want to make one video talking about all the things you can do to just, just solve this problem and never have to worry about mana again. So let, let's go straight into it. The number one thing you can do is get this aspect, the uh, the Prodigy's aspect. Uh, using a cooldown restores 15 to 25 mana. This luckily is in the Codex. So if you if you go into the Codex, uh, Prodigy's aspect, using a cooldown restores 15 mana. So this is uh, Witchwater in Hawazar, which is down here, here, so it's, it's right there. You go complete this dungeon, you'll get this aspect, and then you can uh, you can imprint that on any item that, it's, that, that it can go on as many times as you want. So even when you're leveling, you should always have this equipped in my opinion. You should always just put this on whatever piece of gear you can. And it, it, I mean, it's in the codex, so there's, there's no worry. You can use it, but you can repeat use it as many times as you want. You should also, once you get higher, be looking for this on normal gear. So if you find a legendary drop, it actually drops at a better percent. So the, the Prodigy's aspect itself in the Codex gives 15 mana. If you find this on a legendary, it could be higher. So I've got 23 right now. 25 would be nice, but 23 is pretty good. And what this does is any ability you use will, rege will regain mana. So like a lot of people think these skills cost mana. They don't. These 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 skills are zero mana. So the, the big ones like uh, Ice Shards, Blizzard, they cost mana. Everything else doesn't. So if you're getting mana back, that means that's a net positive. It's, it's a positive mana regen. So if I empty my mana now and then burn some cooldowns, it's full. And that's that's how it should be. It should be like that. So you can just run through your cooldowns and get your mana full. The next thing would be to get your cooldown reduction improved. So the better your cooldown reduction, the faster you can use these skills. So you can see here on Ice Arm, I've only got a 12.7 cooldown. If your cooldown reduction is higher, you can use these more often. And the more you use them, the more your mana comes back. So sure, using Ice Arm is good for giving you ice armor, but I use it more just to refund my mana. Like, look at that. Your mana goes down, your mana goes up. Y your mana goes down, your mana goes up. So th the better your cooldown reduction, th this is nearly back online. So it's nearly ready to get my mana back again. So it means you can just constantly cast. You can just permanently cast. I think right now, cooldown reduction of 36.4%, which is, which is pretty good. I think around 40 is the most I've ever had. Uh, so that's a stat you should be looking for. As the tiers go up, the amount you get on each roll is higher. So I'm in tier four with this character. So the, the stats are obviously higher. That will be harder to get to something like that on a on a lower tier, but once you get higher, it will. Um, and it drops on certain items. I'll link a thing down below which shows what rolls on what. But basically, cooldown reduction comes on the headpiece. So I got like 8.9 on the head. It comes on the amulet. Yeah, I got 12.6% on the amulet. And then the next, so the next big tip for cooldown reduction is don't use a two-handed staff. Everything else, I would use a, a one-hander and a focus because a focus, not only does it give cooldown reduction, so you can see the 11.6% cooldown reduction, it has native cooldown reduction that can roll under the damage. So you can see at the top, uh, the damage. Under all of that, there's a 9.7% cooldown reduction. So that weapon alone gives 20% cooldown reduction, which is, you know, the same as everything else put together. So having a focus is, is the, in my opinion, is essential for most sorcerer builds. To have the mana, uh, the mana problem solved is having a focus. So that would be my next huge tip because, I mean, you, you can see if, if you take this off, I'll take everything off just to show you. I take these three things off. The cooldown reduction on that is 20 seconds. Uh, the cooldown on that is 24, 13, 20. So if we say the two shields are 20 and then we put everything, put everything back on, it's 12, 13 ish and 13 ish. So you can use it almost twice as much. Okay. So the next thing, uh, the, ne the next big tip would be in your abilities. So if I open the skill tree, and we go down the skill tree. This one here, Avalanche. So if you're new to the game, if you're new to Diablo 4, Lucky Hit is a little confusing. So just think of Lucky Hit as crit, your chance to do something. You have a chance every attack to Lucky Hit. And if you have the Avalanche key passive, there is a chance that when you Lucky Hit, your Frost skills have a 10% chance to make a cast cost no mana. Um, chance is doubled against vulnerable targets. So if you're using an Ice build, which I mean, Ice builds are probably some of the best end game builds right now. So I assume a lot of people are going to be using ice builds. Um, I'll link my ice build down below if you want to want to try it. But this means that there's a 10% chance when you lucky hit that your ice that your ice ice shards or blizzard will cost no mana. So what you can do is try and get your lucky hit up. 
So if you go up the, the skill tree, there's certain things that, like this one here, precision magic, your lucky hit chance increased by 15%. So there's, there's ways to get your lucky hit up, but just having this alone is a really good way to have um, a chance. So it's not giving you mana back, but it's a chance of not using mana in the first place. So where before you might use three blizzards, there might be a chance you can use four before you your mana goes to zero. So yeah, they're the, they're the big things. The, the other thing is to build up a good pool of mana reduction. So using less mana per cast and then mana like resource generation. So mana coming back faster. You want to build up a good pool of that so that, you know, it's passively coming back fast and not going down as fast. So if you go in the skill tree, the, a big a big one I like to rotate is the two shields. So if you have flame shield, I have both. So if you have flame shield and you have mystical flame shield, you have a 25% mana cost reduction. So when something would cost a certain amount, it costs less. And then on the ice armor, if you get the second thing here, ice armor, when it is active, your mana regeneration is increased by 25%. So using this will mean your mana goes down faster. And then using this means it comes back faster. So those two together are really helpful. There's stuff in the Paragon board as well, but you can talk about this all day. But another thing is just to look for it on your gear. Again, I'll link something down below, which, which was really helpful, but you want to just look on your gear for things that give you mana reduction. If we go down here, like you can, you can see on this ring, uh, there's a 15.9% resource generation. So that literally is just, is just mana regeneration. It's just mana coming back, which is, which is huge. Um, I don't know if I've got any more mana reduction on there as well. So 8% mana cost reduction. So just, just looking for it on your items as you, as you, as you find an item and you're leveling, just try and find stuff with it on. If you've, if you've got a really bad stat that doesn't work for your build, you can roll that as well and try and try, try and find more mana resource generation or mana cost reduction um, and just try and build up a pool of of just mana cost reduction so you see here mana generation 15 percent that's not great uh, mana cost reduction eight percent it's not great I, I don't have much on this build and i have no mana issues I, I i i can easily like say there's a pack here i can lay down a bunch of blizzards teleport out the way and it's back i mean that that's enough to clear three packs and that by the time you've you've got to the the fourth pack these are coming back, your mana's back, and you're, you're good to go again. You jump away, you jump away. It, it, it's constantly just coming back. It, it's very, very hard to run out of mana unless you're doing a, a very long boss fight. I, I don't think you're going to have mana issues. So yeah, that, that's the tips. Uh, hopefully this makes it easier. I, I, I think this is something that especially new players to Sorcerer or new players to Diablo struggle with because maybe they... They don't prioritize mana and they just think it, it, you can't solve the problem and they're sat with, I don't know, Fireball or Ice, Ice Bolt, whatever the basic attack is here. Um, but really, you can you can, you can can get to a position where you don't need that. So yeah, that's it. Once you've got that sorted, you can follow some really good builds as well. You can you can really dig into some really powerful builds, but this is definitely something you should try and get solved. So hopefully the video helps. Um, yeah, that's it. Follow for more guides, tips, things like that. Uh, I'm covering a lot of Diablo content and thank you for all the support recently, the, uh, the follows and stuff on youtube has been has been wild so thank you so so much i also stream i'll drop that down below if you ever want to come hang out live ask any questions stuff like that but that's it for the video take care see you in the next one bye